Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about my investment approach heading into 2022 and also where I'm getting my money from. So I recently did uh, a remortgage on my home and I pulled out some of the equity out of my home. So I want to break that down, how I did it, how I structured it, why I structured it the way I did and different options around, you know, if you have equity in your home and you think it makes sense for you, both on a risk and planning profile, then what's the best way to pull money out of your home? And then when you get that, what's the best way to kind of invest that going forward? So I'm going to break all that down in this video. So back in 2011, I met my wife, Stephanie, at that time, and we bought a pre-purchase uh, with another family member. So we actually bought a larger house and we bought one third of the house. We sold that one about a year and a half later, made a bit of money on it. Then we bought another house in Surrey, BC, and we bought that in 2014. And we sold it in 2017, almost three years exactly. And in that time frame, obviously, the market just went straight up. So we made a lot of money in that house it allowed us to move to where we are now and of course since 2017 houses have continued to skyrocket and that's why i think it's so important when you're younger to start saving whatever you can save and that little bit can get you into the first home and keep stepping up because i look at where we started to where we are today and we're only 10 years later my wife and i are coming up on our 10-year wedding anniversary we've owned three homes We've had four kids and we've had a lot going on, but here we are today, have a lot of equity in the home. And of course, like a lot of you viewers, that equity is doing nothing for you, it's sitting in your property. But a lot of you, you know, could maybe leverage that to some extent or use that equity to help you get to retirement. So I was coming up for renewal and there was the equity in the home. Now there's two ways to do this. There's to have your standard mortgage and then have a home equity line of credit and you borrow against your home equity line of credit and invest that money. And if you do the paperwork right, let's say you take 100,000 out of the home equity line of credit, invest it, keep it as a separate loan, track it, you can deduct the interest on that. What I ended up doing is not the home equity line of credit. So Scotiabank has what's called a step mortgage. And within that step mortgage, you can have three mortgage components. They're all first position mortgages, but three mortgage components. And then you also have three HELOC components as well. So what I did is I created my regular mortgage that I have on my house. And then I took out an extra $250,000 in a second piece of this step mortgage. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. You're allowed three mortgages or three mortgage pieces within this mortgage portfolio. Now, why did I do a mortgage versus a HELOC? Well, the biggest thing was rate. I could get a rate. It's a variable rate, but it's 1.35%. If I went with a HELOC, it was going to be prime plus half. So right now it's 2.95. Now, both of them, as interest rates rise, both of them would creep up as well because it's a variable rate mortgage and the HELOC is tied to prime plus. Now, the difference between the two, the biggest difference between the two is when you have a mortgage, you're making mortgage payments towards us. So you're paying principal and interest towards that loan. Now, if I did the HELOC, I could do interest only. So my monthly payments would be less, but the interest would be higher. Yes, you can deduct the interest on either side. So you're deducting a larger amount on the HELOC, not percentage wise deduct more, but it's just a bigger number. So naturally you can deduct more, but I wanted that lower rate. Now, the next step obviously in the process is investing the money. I've mentioned many times on this channel, uh, one of the portfolio managers I use is BCV Asset Management. We had Chris Richard from BCV on the channel here uh, about a week and a half ago. He just talks about five things that could affect your portfolio in 2022. People ask me like, what's the market gonna do this year? It's like, I don't know what the market's gonna do today mine tomorrow and the next day in, in the year ahead. No one has that crystal ball. You have to invest based on your risk parameters and, and what you do know. And what I do know is that I'm going to borrow this money for five years. I want it stable, secure in, in companies that I know and trust, but I also want to get a good return. So the 250,000 I'm going to shuffle off to BCV is being put in a joint investment account between my wife and I, so we can split the interest deductibility, but also the income on there that we can split that going forward uh, as we do this investment. Now, BCV, they invest in blue chip dividend paying companies. So Every company they own pays a dividend and has a history of increasing dividends and increased earnings. So that's why I like it, right? I'm getting cash flow from everything I own. So it's like buying a rental property. It's like taking 250,000 out of my house and buying a rental property, but I don't have to deal with the tenants. For me, I'd rather buy dividend paying portfolio, collect that rent and move on my way. Before we did this process, my wife and I sat down and, and you know went through our financial plan. Where do we wanna be in two years, five years, 10 years and, and beyond? And part of that was we wanna get a bigger home. So my office here where I record and where I work from is on my property. But as our business is growing, um, you know, we have some staff in the office here, but we need more space. So eventually I'm going to have to get something that allows me to have a bigger office. And I'm a huge proponent of working on my property. I like the tax breaks of it. I like the structure of it. So probably within the next five years, maybe a bit more than five years, we're going to sell what the house that we're in and move to a different home. And hopefully again, we don't know what the market's gonna do, but I'm confident that over the next five years, we'll make a bit of money, which will help us get into the next home a bit easier. If not, and my 250s were 200, that's okay. We, we budgeted out, we have kind of our stress 
test in there that look, if that 250 went to 100 and in five years we needed to upgrade, we'd be okay. So it's not gonna devastate our plan going forward, but it could help us a little bit going forward. So we thought the risk was worth it. And I think anytime you invest, anytime, especially if you're born or using equity in your home to invest, you wanna do a stress test. Like what's the worst case scenario and is it gonna derail the plan? But again, if you're getting close to retirement or maybe you're 10 or 15 years from retirement and you're on track, you know you're gonna have enough, you don't need to take that extra risk, then I would not recommend doing anything like this. I always say, if you're gonna throw money into the market, expect it to go down 50% in the first month. And if it doesn't, then you're ahead of the game, okay? That's the way you should invest all the time. That's my personal opinion. And I think that should be yours as well. And if it does, how does that make you feel? I know for me, if I threw 250 in and which were 125 in a month, yeah, I'd be frustrated, but I'd be okay with that. I'm okay with that. That's just the way my risk profile is. If that's not you, I would not look at doing something like this. For some of you, and we've done plans for people where it, it makes a ton of sense. It's gonna get you to retirement based on a conservative uh, return on that portfolio. It's gonna get you to retirement maybe a year or two earlier or when you wanna retire. This video is not about taking equity out of your home. It's about if you have equity in your home and it makes sense from a risk profile, start looking at maybe using some of that equity. Again, that equity in your home is sitting there docile. It's doing nothing for you. Should you leverage some of that? And the last note I wanna make is that that 250 of equity is about a quarter of the equity I have in my home. So again, we've done very well in this home. Uh, we've had lots of equity build up just through market growth. Um, and, and so we took a quarter of it. So it's not like I'm taking all of the equity available to me in the home and investing that. Borrowing money from your home should not derail your plan for retirement. It should help it. And if it's going to possibly derail it, then it's definitely a big no. If you get into retirement, it's kind of the opposite, right? If you need to start taking equity out of your home, you wanna stay in your home a little bit longer and not move out or downsized. It's kind of the same conversation. Do you do like a five-year mortgage and have a five-year plan on that? Or do you do a home equity line of credit? It's the same process, different needs for the money because you're gonna actually spend that money but the process would be the same in determining what makes the most sense for you. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you're thinking about a line of credit uh, out of your home, make sure you talk to your financial advisor, put a plan in place, do a stress test, make sure it's the right decision for you moving forward. It's not easy money. A lot of you think let's board invest it's easy money. It's not. There's risk to this and you need to understand both the benefit and the downside before you move forward. So thanks for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.